In this presentation, we are going to look at the British conquest of Ashanti Empire in 1896 and the Battle of Ashantiwa, of Ya Ashantiwa in 1901. The two developments tend to link uh, to each other. While with the increasing, increasing French interests within the region, the British decided to take over Ashanti Empire. This was very important to them because they, ne they never wanted the French to have some level of influence. Remember also that the French we are having running battles with uh, uh, Sekou Ahmed. And Sekou Ahmed decided to make a move towards in negotiating with the Ashanti in order for them to come together and uh, resist the Europeans. Now this move made the British to give directive to Major, Major General Sir Garrett Worsley, who was known in Africa at that time as Sagarenti. He was given the duty of taking over Ashanti Empire. The assignment was given to him in October 1873 with an army consisting of Brit the British or uh, British soldiers, the uh, West Indians and some African soldiers. He launched an attack in Kumasi which was the capital of Ashanti Empire in January 1874. While the, the Ashanti military or the Ashanti warriors tried to bring in some level of resistance, but they found out that they could, that, that they could not match the British force. For this reason, they abandoned Kumasi when Sagarenti entered the Ashanti capital on the uh, 4th of February 1974. He found out that nobody was there for him to negotiate with. He immediately left and went back to the coastal area from where he marched the army down to Kumasi. Well, an envoy of the Ashanti Hena at that time that went with the name Kofi Karefari was sent to negotiate with Wesley. He caught up with Wesley at Formena on the 14th of March 1874 and signed a humiliating treaty of Formena. By the treaty, the Ashanti, the Ashanti King or Empire was to give up all her claims to the coastal areas, including Elmina, which was one of the areas where, that the Europeans, mainly the British merchants, were based. And as well, that the Ashanti will have to pay 50,000 ounces of gold as war damages. The defeat as well was very important to the British. Well, although Kofi Kare, uh, Kare Kare or Kare Fare was to rise up to the throne, but he was as well deposed from his position and his brother Osei Bonsu was elevated to the head of the Ashanti under the supervision of the British. Well, by 1896, the British government, or governor at the coast, named William Maxwell, received instruction from Britain to put Ashanti effectively under British rule. The Ashanti Hena, as at that period, was requested 
by the British to sign Treaty of Protection. But it was it was difficult for, 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 for the Ashanti people to do that. Well, the British as well demanded for the balance of the 50,000 ounces of gold, which was part of the Treaty of uh, Formena signed earlier. This request we are not seriously met by the Ashanti rulers. The rejection simply means that the British has seen an excuse to justify the conquest of Ashanti. A military expedition was dispatched to Kumasi immediately. The Ashanti Hena, as at that time that the military expedition was dispatched, was prepared first. The force of the British made him to give up. He was arrested upon the fact that he was he submitted, but he was still deported together with his uh, royal family members. The for, uh, they, were, they were first taken to Senegal, from where they were as well moved to Seychelles, or the Seychelles Island. The uh, prepper the first was only allowed to return back to Ashanti in 1924. Well, with the conquest, the British took over control of Ashanti, Ashanti Empire. Around 1901, the British governor, as at that time, was Sir Frederick Hoxson. Sir Frederick Hoxson went to Kumasi and called all the chiefs to a meeting. He demanded the full payment of the 50,000 ounces of gold agreed in uh, the Treaty of Pomena. But he made a very strange demand, which created an issue. He demanded that the Ashanti chiefs, he demanded the Ashanti chiefs to surrender the golden stool, which was a symbol of authority. Uh, in fact, the Ashanti saw it as the soul of their existence or of their in, uh, Empire. Hossein, or Freddie Hossein demanded for it. In fact, he stated that he wants to sit on it. But under normal, under the, uh, the, 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 the political structure of the Ashanti, that the, 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 the golden stool, the golden stool was not to be sat on by anybody, not to talk of a stranger. And because they saw it as the soul of the Ashanti nation. And they saw it as an insult. But most of the chiefs and some other warriors could not say much. This particular proclamation and, his, and, and, and actions angered the Queen Mother, named the Queen Mother of uh, Ejisu, named Ya. Ashantiwa and she rose and rebuked the Ashanti warriors for taking such an insult. He said that if the men were too timid to act, the women would take over the fight. This led to revolt in the Ashanti area. The revolt was given the name Ya Ashantiwa which was uh, the Queen Mother. The revolt lasted for around nine months before it was finally crushed by the British, bringing to an end the independence of Ashanti. Well, that same year, 1901, Ashanti was fully declared a British protectorate. And this signified the total collapse or the total takeover of Ashanti Empire by the British. Well, along the line with the formation of uh, Ghana country, the territories of the Ashanti and some other territories became part of what is known today as Ghana.
If you are watching us for the very first time, please subscribe to our channel. Click on the notification icon so that anytime we drop a new content, you'll be one of the earliest persons to be notified. We also beg you to share our content so that they can reach to a lot of persons that might be interested in content in African history. Thanks for still being part of our channel.